When it comes to retro gaming, the sharing of information and the internet has made it rare for games that were so good in the past to remain unrecognized today. Nevertheless, such seems to be the case with Conquest of the Crystal Palace for the NES, which remains an obscure title in a gargantuan library of classic games. Conquest of the Crystal Palace combines action platforming with adventure elements. The main character, Farron, has a health bar, so one need not worry about single-hit deaths like some of the other action games on the system. Jump is possible, but note that attacks during a jump make the main character fall quicker than normal, which is a bit unexpected. At first this seems awkward, but it's easy enough to adjust to after playing for a while. Also, whenever you get hit, you're knocked back a bit like Ninja Gaiden. This can cause some frustration, as getting hit this way makes it easy to fall into pits. However, in this game, the pits send you back to a place earlier in the level, rather than killing you outright. The main character's dog, Zap, can always be called upon to attack enemies on the screen. However, he also has a health bar, so this ability should not always be used. A plethora of enemies await, each of which drop items when defeated. The rewards are most commonly gold, but you can also get weapons and other items as well. Gold is necessary to purchase health, items, and extra lives in shops that appear in each of the levels. You can also use these shops to learn additional combat abilities. The intra-level shop system kind of reminded me a bit of Zexus, where using the shops played a key role in the game. One of the first things that leaps out at you when you sit down and play this game is the art style, which is completely unique. The game's graphics seem to be influenced by Japan's samurai era. This can be seen by the level designs, the characters and their clothing, and also the designs of the bosses. According to the story, the Kingdom of the Crystal Palace was conquered by an evil demon named Zarus 15 years before the game begins. Only Zapolis, a protector of the kingdom, and Farron, its prince, managed to escape. For some unknown reason, Zapolis was transformed into a dog named Zap, and the prince was changed into a six-month-old baby. But hey, I guess I won't ask any questions. After the passage of years, Farron has cultivated his fighting skills and learned that it is time to retake the same kingdom that was deprived of him. As the game begins, Farron must choose one of three spirit crystals to aid him in his quest. The life crystal increases your overall health, the spirit crystal allows Farron to shoot fireballs, and the flight crystal allows for an extended jump range. The choice seems pretty significant at first, but it's actually possible to acquire all three of these abilities later in the game. Interestingly enough, Conquest of the Crystal Palace was the first project of Yasumi Matsuno, the famous game designer that went on to play key roles in the creation of Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen, Final Fantasy Tactics, and Final Fantasy XII. Working alongside Matsuno on the game was composer Masaharu Iwata, who later collaborated with his peer many times over. Though the NES was incapable of delivering the sound quality that Iwata's later games delivered, you can still hear his influence in the game. Despite the magnitude of their later achievements, though, it was Conquest of the Crystal Palace where the two got their start. The game was developed by Quest in Japan and brought to the United States in 1990 by ASMIC. For the North American release, the difficulty was reduced, a decision that was fairly commonplace at the time. There was also some censorship to conform with Nintendo's North American standards. For instance, the game is called Maten Doji in Japan, Demon Heaven Boy. Also, the Crystal Palace is actually the Heavenly Palace, but this was considered a religious reference that was removed from the game. In the Japanese version, one of the levels was also based on Hell, but in the North American counterpart, there were some graphical changes to this area to make it less overt. Also, the instructions refer to the stage as the Lair of the Hungry Ghosts instead. Oddly enough though, references to demons remain in the game and weren't removed. In hindsight, it's surprising that this wasn't touched while enemy graphics were. One of the coolest parts of the game are the bosses. At the end of each stage, Farron faces one of the demons that has taken over the Crystal Palace. For 1990, the sprite sizes for these enemies were huge and they really stood out. The last boss is especially cool and has two different forms that provide a challenge. With the help of your weapons, combat techniques, and zap, a bit of awareness and strategy is necessary to defeat them. Overall, there's almost nothing wrong with the game for what it was, and it really did everything a good action platformer should do. Unfortunately, the game received little publicity in North America, despite how great of a game it was. Unlike some games that were arguably worse, it never got a full feature in Nintendo Power or anything like that. The game is a bit challenging, but isn't quite nearly as unfair as some of its counterparts in the same era. 
There are places where teams of enemies fall from the sky, and birds that fly in tricky patterns, but there's no one-hit deaths and that was a big thing. With only five levels, the game is a bit short, but it's fulfilling, and really stands out despite the lack of attention. For retro gaming fans, Conquest of the Crystal Palace is certainly worth playing today. If you like this review and remember Conquest of the Crystal Palace, leave a comment below about the most memorable aspect of the game to you. Also, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell below to be alerted upon the addition of new ones.